Hello, everybody. I hope I'm not too loud. It's freezing. Hello, hello. Welcome to Oxford Online English. My name is Carrie and happy Halloween, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on this very, very cold winter's day here in Madrid. Um, let's see who we've got. Laurie 25, hello. Nikki, Abdul, Umid, Jose, Nikki Rose, hello everybody. Welcome, how are you all doing? How are you all doing? Hello Marina, hello Mina, nice to see you both in chat. How are we today? Hello Valeria, I'm glad that you like Halloween, you are in the right place. Hello Julia, hello KS Calligraphy and Arts, welcome. Hello, Ashley Shen. Thank you for sharing your pumpkins and orange hearts in chat. How are you, Ashley Shen? Thank you for joining me. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Anna. Hello, Madassa Duzaman. Hey to you too. How are you? Hello, Adelina. Thank you for joining me again today. How are you? Hello, Manjula. Hello, Omia. Hello, Lucia or Lucia. How are you? Hello, Sonia. Hello, Nat Monmon Thin. Hello, I. Hello, Fabio. Happy Halloween to you too. How are you? Um. Hello, 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 Nadim. Do you remember me? Yes, I do, Nadim, from my last stream. How are you? Hello, Karina. Thank you, Madassa Duzamman, for joining me for the first time. I'm glad you are here. Hello, everybody, and welcome. So, today is going to be a nice, relaxing, chilled stream about Halloween and maybe some autumn traditions that you might have and that you might like to share. We are going to go through um, a quick passage, a text about Halloween and some vocabulary that you could ex that you could use to talk about the tradition, the Halloween tradition. And then we're going to have a little quiz at the end just a general knowledge quiz about Halloween to see how much you know. And then if we have time, we will do a Q&A. So if you have any questions for me that you would like me to answer, then um, please do let me know. In fact, maybe, maybe I could see if I can add a little um, option. So maybe if I click that, then perhaps you will be able to ask me a question, maybe, for a, a Q&A later on. So I'll, I'll check them afterwards. Um, okay, so, uh, Edouard, hello, how are you? Thank you for joining me today. Hello, Christopher. You had a Halloween party yesterday at home. It was pretty cool. I love that. Fantastic. Um, to be honest, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not a huge Halloween fan. Um, but 
as, you know, I spend a lot of time teaching kids. I think that it's a, a nice, fun holiday to to make some creative crafts or to eat sweets. It's a good excuse to eat sweets. Um, but uh, yeah, I know that obviously Halloween uh, is very, very popular. Uh, in other parts of the world. So we are going to start with some questions about you, your Halloween traditions, your autumn traditions, etc, etc. So question number one, what are some traditional Halloween activities or celebrations in your country or in your culture? And if you don't celebrate Halloween, then that's absolutely fine. I know that a lot of places don't. Maybe there are some new traditions that are popping up in your country. So let me know. Okay, Victor Manuel, could you please explain to the group what is Dia de Muertos? What is that? for those people in chat that don't know, what is Dia de Muertos? Okay, Ashley Shan. Knock neighbor door to door and ask for some candies. Do you know what this activity is called, Ashley Shen? Mina, you never celebrate Halloween. It's not our cultural thing. Perfect. We celebrate Id Mubarak and the first day kids visit and collect candies from other neighbours. Oh, great. Marina carving out pumpkins. Victor Mexicans celebrate a traditional party in November. And it means death day, Juan Gabriel. Yes, so the day of the dead, where people from some countries, including Spain, right? I live in Spain currently. I'm living in Madrid. And tomorrow is a, a national holiday here because people like to celebrate the dead. Like they like to not necessarily mourn, but they like to remember people who have passed away. So it's quite a special day. In Sri Lanka, we do not celebrate Halloween. It's not in our culture. Ashley Shen decorating your yards with jack-o'-lanterns and some spooky stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, Alexander, exactly. All Saints Day is also celebrated in other countries too. And it stems from the Catholic religion. So, now talking more broadly, let's go kind of stay on the topic of Halloween, but also focus on the season. How do you typically celebrate Halloween or the changing of seasons with your friends and family? So I think that we are very much into the season of autumn right now. What types of things do you do with your family during this period of time? Laurie 25, the Day of the Dead is known for people going to visit the graves of deceased and bringing candles and flowers. In gypsy culture, they sing and dance around the grave. Wow, Laurie, I did not know that. Thank you for sharing. Julia, Julia, did I already say hello to you? Hello, Julia. People from Manama are rare to celebrate Halloween in our tight knit culture. Having said that, hotels are decorated in the, the form of the celebration. Okay, so the holiday, the hotels decorate for Halloween. That's very interesting. But remembering the death of relatives is on the 2nd of November, Alexander. 
There aren't any activities in Iran because Halloween isn't famous. Okay, so great. People don't celebrate Halloween in Iran. Dia de Muertos is a great traditional celebration in Mexico. Hello, Famina. Thank you for joining me again. Marina, we have a national holiday today. Reformation Day. And it's related to Martin Luther. Wow, I did not know that, Marina. Happy holidays. Having a lot of pumpkin spice lattes, which is my favorite ritual in chilly weather. <gasps> Absolutely. I love anything autumn themed. Autumn soup, autumn coffee, autumn smells in the house. You know, cinnamon, all spice, vanilla. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Well done. Question number three. What are some local superstitions or beliefs related to Halloween or the autumn season in your region? Anybody from Spain is in chat. I just wanted to let you know that I'm drinking a hot cup of cola cow right now. <laughs> Not coffee, cola cow. I'm freezing cold. There might be some Christians that are most likely to celebrate as a private party in their home. Absolutely. I know some friends of mine are preparing some Halloween parties today and tomorrow. Just for fun, you know, to get family and friends together. We don't have a seasonal superstition. Okay. Yes, Mina, superstition, question mark, what does that mean? A superstition can be a folklore or a myth, which could be related to Halloween or could be related to this time of year, where, you know, some people believe that if something happens, then it could bring them bad luck. We have a common one in the United Kingdom where we say if a black cat walks in front of you, then it's bad luck. Okay. So it's a superstition. Do you have any superstitions around this time of year? Halloween is a devil celebration and there is no meaning to it. So what's the point of celebrating it? Well, Mango, we are all entitled to our own opinions. But I think it's just the festivities of the time of year, right? Carving pumpkins. Eating pumpkin-themed food. Enjoying jumping in leaves. Scaring people. You know, these are all just fun activities. But like I said, you're entitled to your opinion, so it's fine. Oh, somebody grew up in Trans... Tra oh, no, I can't say that now. I grew up in Transylvania, so Dracula is the main attraction. Laurie, that's so interesting. Domenico, hello. Greetings from La Paz in Mexico. Carrie, guess what? It's really early here, but I was awakened by the notification of your live stream. So first of all, Domenico, I am very sorry for waking you up, but it's good to see you in chat. How is everything going in Mexico? Tomorrow you have a holiday there. Do you have any plans? El Dia de los Muertos in Mexico, question mark, Ashley Shen. Yes, that is a holiday that they have tomorrow and also in other... Is it just Spanish-speaking countries? Domenico, 
they don't have Dia de los Muertos in Italy, right? We have All Saints Day in the United Kingdom, but it's not a national holiday. What costumes do you have to put on for Halloween? Is it scary? I mean, you know, just dressing up in any kind of costume is acceptable, especially in the US. In the US, they don't just walk around in crazy, terrifying costumes. They dress up as Disney characters, they dress up as famous actors, some of them dress up as like video game cartoon characters. It's just for fun, so it doesn't have to be scary. Marina, people go to the graves of their deceased loved ones on death's day, yep. Alexander, Halloween is a bridge between Christian Memory Day and the death celebrated in Central America indigenous people. I don't know what superstitions are related to this season. Are there any in Spain? I can't remember just now. I'm not really sure, Veronica. That's a good question. I don't celebrate. I don't celebrate Halloween. It's not important in our country. I belong to Nepal. You belong to Nepal, or you're from Nepal? Typing increase. Okay, are there any autumn or Halloween related books, movies or music that you particularly enjoy? Coco. Laurie, yes, I recently watched Coco actually. I know it's quite, well it's not old, but it was released quite a few years ago now. But I love Coco, it's such a, such a nice, um, film. Yes, Domenico, we, we've been talking about the Day of the Dead. And I asked you, does that exist in Italy too? I know it exists in most Spanish speaking countries, like here in Spain, we have a holiday tomorrow. I know in Mexico, in Venezuela, in other um, South American, Central American countries, they celebrate the Day of the Dead. But do you celebrate in Italy? Yes, it's also celebrated in Italy. How interesting. I did not know that. Yes, Ashley Shen, it is a very, very, yeah, uh, touching story. Quite emotional. Thriller, Veronica, absolutely. Thriller from Michael Jackson. Ah, yes, so tomorrow, so Lucia, you are Italian too? Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oof, I hate horror movies, but yes, Laurie, they are very good examples. <laughs> Alexander enjoyed the Halloween episodes of the TV series, How I Met Your Mother? Absolutely. Carrie, I'm sending you greetings on behalf of my girlfriend. Oh, thank you so much, Domenico's girlfriend. What's what's her name, Domenico? I'm from Nepal. I don't know about Halloween, but I think Halloween music is more enjoyable. Okay. What type of Halloween music do you like? Julia, nobody would dispute the fact that there will be Mirad of Halloween related books intrigued to the avid readers. Yes. Although only if you like that genre. If you don't like that genre, then maybe not. Brenda. Her name is Brenda. Hello, Brenda from uh, everybody from Oxford Online English. I hope that means we're going to have a new viewer, Domenico. <laughs> and my last question. The best question, I saved it till last. Do you have any favorite autumn foods or recipes that you enjoy during the season? This season, which is autumn. Autumn slash winter. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Nessie, is that right? Pumpkin cake, delicious. You don't understand, but I like gorgoria. Gor Can you tell me what that is, please? Ilantica, I'm very interested to know. Victor likes Dia de Muertos bread. What type of bread is that, Victor? Warm wine with cinnamon, Laurie. Mm. Marina, I watched a movie about a holiday. They didn't have much money, but they wanted to spend a luxurious holiday. It was hilarious. Neshi. Ah, Neshi. Alexander. Pumpkin pancakes. Mmm. Yummy. Pie with maple tea. That sounds delicious. Veronica. I love to eat a very hot dish of soup. Doesn't really matter what kind of soup, but it must be really hot. I agree, Veronica. Absolutely. Malt wine. Mmm. Typing increase. A coffee. Yes. Very nice, everybody. Well done. So, what are we going to do now? Well, I'm going to give you a back story. A back story of Halloween. Okay, it's going to be a very short story. Okay, we're not going to go throughout the history of Halloween and the different religious aspects and the controversy and the taboo topics. No, we're not doing that. Like I said, today is just a very chilled out, relaxed stream just for a little bit of fun. Okay, so here we have a text about Halloween. I'm going to read the text and I would like you to pay particular attention to the words that you see in bold. Okay, <clears throat> and then we're going to do a vocabulary exercise. So, and I've just had a cup of hot chocolate. So I do, maybe I should drink some water, hang on. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I had an important message that I need to, uh, to, to, to look at. But yes, hopefully you took some time to read this text. And now I'm going to read it for you. And then we're going to do a vocabulary exercise. So, Halloween 
with its roots dating back over 2,000 years, is a blend of ancient Celtic and Christian traditions. Originally known as Sarain, it is marked at the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. The Celts believed that this night, the boundary between the living and the dead blurred, allowing spirits to roam freely. To ward off malevolent entities, they lit bonfires and wore costumes. In the 18th century, the Christian church incorporated Siam into All Saints Day, celebrated on November 1st. The evening before was called All Hallows' Eve, eventually becoming Halloween. Today, Halloween is a festive occasion celebrated with decorations, costume parties, trick-or-treating, and a spooky supernatural atmosphere. Okay, so as I said, we had some words in bold, okay? And we are going to, Domenico, maybe if you ask me a question, I'll reply, but I shouldn't really be speaking Spanish on a, uh, an English stream. Some people say Celtic, some people say Celtic. I've always said Celtic. I think it depends if you're talking about the Scottish one or the Irish one. I'm not really sure. Okay, so with its roots dating back over 2,000 years, the boundary between the living and the dead blurred, allowing spirits to roam freely, to ward off. So we have two, two vocabulary words, expressions, phrases here. Three, to ward off. Number four, malevolent entities. Number four, they lit bonfires and wore costumes. Number five, the Christian church incorporated Samhain into All Saints Day. Number six, Halloween is a festive occasion. And number seven, a spooky supernatural atmosphere. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to match the vocabulary words from the text one to eight to their synonyms A to H. Okay, so match these vocabulary words from the text, one to eight, to the answers A to H. And remember, if you would like me to answer any questions, send me a question in the Q&A tab. Should be, um, that should be on your screen somewhere. If you would like me to answer a question later on, let me know. Okay, Alexander and Julia, thank you very much for putting your answers in a row so that I can see them quite easily. Um, although, Julia, it seems that 
number one, you put S, but I'm guessing you meant D because you haven't put D next to any of the others. And S is also next to my D on my keyboard, so I suppose you have misclicked. Let's brew up some coffee to get my brain going. <laughs> so, number one, D, roots, origins. Number two, G, blood, unclear. Number three, ward off. F, prevent. Number four, malevolent. A, malicious. Five, bonfires. B, fire pits. Six, incorporated. H, combined. Seven, festive. C, joyous. Eight, supernatural. E, mystic. There you have your answers. So congratulations to all of you who got them right. Alexander, that's a very good question. Yes, the Irish and the Scottish are quite interlinked in their own way. So uh, the Celtic language also exists in Scotland. Um, perhaps it's not... <laughs> Well, actually, I shouldn't really make any comment on that because I'm not Scottish and I don't know how much um, Celtic they use. But yes. Welsh or not, though, they have their own language. They have their own Welsh language. And as far as I'm aware, the Welsh language is much more widely spoken than Celtic. But that's a very good question to ask. Very good indeed. So, what are you going to do now? Well, you are going to add these new synonyms from our original text to complete the text you have gaps one to eight you have to complete the text using the synonyms in the orange box Very good. Julia, you are on a roll. Yes, I can imagine you are, Domenico. It's very early in the morning where you are. Very early indeed. What's the weather like in Mexico right now? Julia, I am very impressed by your efforts. Fantastic, Julia. Well done. There is a famous song about bonfire. Something 
by Robbie Williams. It just spooks me. <laughs> Is that Marina? I don't remember. Do you mean Robbie Williams from Take That? <gasps> Manuel, where have you been? We missed you. Yes, Manuel, you'll be very proud of Julia. She has been participating, putting 1000% effort into the class today. She has correctly answered all of the gaps from today's text. So Julia, you should be very proud of yourself. You did great, well done. Wow, Marina, I'll have to uh, look that up after the class. Yes, Manuel. I did take one stream off. It was only one um, last week. October is a pretty difficult month for me, so I decided to take last week off stream, but I am back. And I probably won't be taking any more time off until Christmas. Supposed to be a sunny day in La Paz. Well, that's excellent. I think it's sunny here now, but it's just so cold. Oh my god, I nearly made an emergency call. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Right, let's go through and check your answers. Exactly, Ashley. Exactly. Don't you think it's strange how we pronounce exactly like it's a G sound rather than an X sound? Exactly. Instead of exactly. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm studying a TEPL course so I can teach ESL. This is very helpful. Wow, Laurie. That's great news. I highly recommend it. I've been teaching English now as a foreign language for 13 years. And I would like to eventually move on to other things. Don't know if I could survive teaching kids for the rest of my life. <laughs> but um, but yeah, being a teacher, especially an English teacher, is extremely rewarding. Right then, so look at this. Wow, we're going to do a little Halloween quiz to finish the class. Have a bit of fun here. I think there's only one question related to the text and the rest of them are just random general knowledge questions. But you do have multiple choice. So I have tried to make it a little bit easier for you. So, oh, look at this cutie thing. Question number one, what was, what is the original name of Halloween? A. Spooky Night B. Samhain C. Hallows Eve or D. Pumpkin Fest <laughs> Not October Fest Pumpkin Fest What's the answer? A, B or C? Oh, okay, we have a lot of uh, mixed answers here between B and C. Please do not answer the questions in the Q&A. That is just for later for you to ask me any questions. English learning related questions or personal questions, I don't mind, but don't answer the quiz questions in the Q&A, please. Um, right then, the correct answer was B from the text, Samai. So, Hallow's Eve is not, Bonfire Heart, is not um, the, the name of, of Halloween. 
the combination of Hallow's Eve and Samhain is Halloween. Question number two. In the USA, which fruit is most commonly associated with Halloween decorations and carving? A. Watermelon. B. Squash. C. Pumpkin. And D. Carrot. Now, even if you don't know anything about Halloween, you should know the answer to this question. I put a couple of really easy ones in there. Even if your English is not up to scratch right now, I'm sure you'll be able to get this one right. Uh, Pumpkin Fest made Manuel laugh. L-O-L, laugh out loud, Manuel. Okay, so everybody's got that one correct. Well done. Of course, it's pumpkin. Question three. What do people traditionally bob for (laughs) on Halloween in the United States of America? As you can guess, many of these questions are related to the USA because they do tend to celebrate Halloween more than any other country in the world. Apples, pears, candy or spiders? What do people traditionally bob for? Yes, Ashley. In fact, squash is the general term for those groups of vegetables. But pumpkin is the name of the type of squash that people carve. So I tried to confuse you. Um... Marina, why are you writing Bob Dylan? <laughs> Marina, what's going on? Did you say something previously to this? Um, Bobbing. Bobbing is a fun, fun game that they do in America during the Halloween season where they put a lot of things in water and these things float, you have your hands tied behind your back and you have to try and pick up the thing with your mouth whilst putting your head in the water. So the actual answer is apples. So no, you don't bob for candy, you trick or treat for candy. But bobbing is an activity with water and apples. So that one was a bit more tricky. What models of apples? Just normal red or green apples, Alexander. Well, now we all know the answer to this question because we spent most of the class talking about it. But in Mexico, what holiday is celebrated around the same time as Halloween and is known for its colourful sugar skull decorations? A. Independence Day. Dia de la Independencia. B. Christmas. Navidad. C. Easter. Pascua. Or D, Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. We all know the answer to this, thanks to Domenico and thanks to Victor. I feel like we should have done the class on Dia de los Muertos now. I feel like that maybe would have been more interesting for everybody. Never mind. Maybe next year. (laughs) Correct, everybody. Well done. Of course, the answer is Day of the Dead. Then, number five. Which country is believed to be the birthplace of Halloween traditions, including dressing up in costumes to ward off spirits? A. Ireland. B. England. C. The USA. Or D. Scotland.
Your voice is more soothing in a Mexican intonation. Do you like my Spanish accent, Julia? I think my Spanish accent is terrible. But thank you so much. I'm trying to improve it. I think I sound quite British when I speak Spanish, which is uh, a little bit embarrassing. Thank you, Julia. That's really nice of you to say. So interesting. We have some mixed um, answers here. You'll be surprised to know that it's actually a island. So when there was a period of time in history uh, where Ireland and Irish people immigrated to America for jobs, a better life, etc. So they actually took the celebration of Halloween with them. So the tradition started in Ireland. Um, I have a lot of Irish friends that celebrate this holiday. Um, but uh, yes, it was originally um, celebrated in Ireland first. That's the origin of the tradition. On average, how much does the US spend during Halloween? A, $1 million. B, $10 million. C, $1 billion. Million. <laughs> One billion dollars <laughs> or see one hundred million dollars. Dominico, Carrie, when I speak Spanish, I speak the language with a Mexican accent. Well, I learned Spanish here back in twenty fourteen, so I picked up this accent. Nice, Dominico. My accent is Andaluth. So my accent um, the way that I pronounce some words is very Andalusian from the south of Spain. So I use a lot of ths in my uh, pronunciation, my Spanish pronunciation. So instead of saying gracias, I usually say gracia, um, which is quite embarrassing. <laughs> but now that I'm in Madrid, I'm trying to neutralize my accent. Okay, so everybody is kind of right. One billion dollars every year. People spend a ridiculous amount of money on Halloween in the USA and combined they spend one billion dollars. Number seven. In which European country did the concept of carving lanterns from turnips or beets originate, which later evolved into the carved Kumpin lanterns we see in the USA? A. France. B. Italy. C. England. D. Portugal. A, B, C or D? Manuel, in the Canary Islands, we say gracias instead of gracias. Gracias, gracias. It's a complicated language sometimes, you know. D's with question marks, C's with question marks, and B's with question marks. So we are not sure what the answer to this question is. Very interesting. So turnip is a root vegetable, a round root vegetable along with beets. And many, many years ago, one of these countries used to carve different things, including lanterns from these vegetables. Oh. And the correct answer is England. Okay. That originated from the UK. 
specifically England. And the last question, question number eight, a fun one. What was the name of the popular 1996 film based on three troublesome witches? A, The Nightmare Before Christmas. B, Coraline. C, Hocus Pocus. Or D, Casper. I think everybody will know the answer to this one. That's very interesting. Does that mean that nobody's watched this film? Is that because it wasn't popular in your country, perhaps? Or maybe because it was made in 1996 and most of you are quite young? What does this mean? Okay, so most of you put A or D. The correct answer is C, Hocus Pocus. I highly recommend it if you would like to get into the Halloween spirit or just like to watch something that's quite funny about three middle-aged women who are witches and they get into a lot of trouble. Hocus Pocus. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Q&A session right now. So I am going to check the questions that people have submitted from the Q&A and answer them to my best ability. So Osama, Mohammed asked, how can I improve my speaking skills when reading? So that is a very good question, Osama. Um, I suppose you mean that whilst you're reading texts or books in English, how can you improve your speaking skills whilst reading at the same time? There are a number of things that you can do with this. Um, I would suggest coming up with a couple of activities that you can practice on a daily basis. So the first exercise that I think could be really beneficial would be writing down, noting down any questions that you could ask yourself about what you have read. So as you're reading whatever text or book you might be reading, write down some questions that you can talk about. And then when you're ready to do a practice speaking, record yourself answering those questions about the text. So usually you would do this in like a discussion based environment where you could have discussions with other people. However, if you want to do that as an individual activity, then I think that preparing some questions and recording yourself doing them would be great. Um, so the next question I am going to answer is, um, oh, I don't have that many. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is, is it classes always starting at this time? Typing increase. So typing increase, I suppose your question is, do the classes always start at this time? Um, typing increase every other Tuesday. I will be here at 12 o'clock UK time. Okay, I do not have another stream now until the 14th of November. So the 14th of November and the 21st of November, I will be here. That's my like two weeks of stream. And then I'll have one week off 
and then I will have another stream the week after. So every two weeks and then one week break and then two weeks and then one week break and I will be here at 12 o'clock UK time. I was thinking about going back to Mondays but I think that's just too complicated to change again. So I'm going to keep it uh, as a Tuesday class rather than a Monday class. But we also have uh, Teacher Rich who streams every Saturday. So you can always catch him here as well. Right, my next question. Uh, I have one more. <laughs> Please, teacher, tell me how I can improve my writing. Well, that is a very broad, long question, Rasha. But thank you for asking. Um, again, I would choose, like, if writing is really your focus, like the key skill that you want to practice, then again, I would take something that you can do every day. So every day I would uh, dedicate 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30, 30 minutes, depending on how much free time you have, to doing short writing exercises. I don't recommend doing a long, like, chunk of time um, because, um, you know, you usually lose interest and it's difficult to, to, um, to stay focused. And I think that doing activities for smaller chunks every single day rather than one day a week is much more beneficial. So what I would do is I would look online for some writing prompts, okay? Especially if you're looking to explore a range of different writing styles, you could look for prompts for writing stories, writing articles, writing academic pieces of writing, and just do small exercises. Or, and maybe even more than that, I would recommend writing a journal or a diary in English. So having a notebook or having an application on your, on your phone where you can put um, daily entries in English in your journal or in your diary. That way you are dedicated to doing it every single day. And also you can kind of look back and check your progress, but also remember those memories of those days that you had. So that would be my recommendation. Oh, we have more questions coming in. Okay, next question. Are you teaching on Oxford Online English for individual classes? Manjula, uh, currently I am not teaching on Oxford Online English because I am quite busy with uh, working in an academy here in Spain. So in the evenings I prepare students uh, for different Cambridge exams and um, also we have intensive courses going on at the moment so I, I am quite busy and I'm also still trying to um, launch my own online English course website, which is taking up a lot of my time. So um, yes, I am trying to, to maybe start my own business. I have started my own business. I'm just not selling anything yet. But um, my goal, my aim for the next two years is to um, sell online courses for English language learners. Then, Alexander, why is the channel called Oxford? Do you connect to the city or the university? Alexander, that's a very good question. And unfortunately, I am not able to answer that question because um, this is not my company. So you would have to ask the founder of Oxford Online English. Um, so unfortunately, I can't answer your question. Um, but 
yeah <laughs> I, I, I can't answer you I'm, I'm so sorry and the last question is from Laurie who I'm pretty sure Laurie this is the first time that I've seen you in my in my stream so uh, thank you for joining me today and thank you for being so um uh what's the word thank you for participating in uh the class today the three best ways to improve grammar that's a very interesting question and i am going to steer clear of the usual method of learning grammar which would be to get a workbook and do exercises over and over and over again learning grammar through context Number one, learning grammar through context, meaning that you surround yourself with the English language and you look at grammar structures and you learn them, you look at the patterns, you figure out when they are used through context. A lot of like, um, well, maybe this is just my experience now with the current academy that I'm working for, but, you know, teachers writing grammar on a whiteboard and trying to explain it to a student doesn't necessarily work. The best way to learn grammar is to question yourself about the grammar rather than ask someone to teach you the grammar. You kind of have to teach yourself and understand it yourself. So, learning grammar through context, I mean, that's kind of a broad answer. Now I have to come up with two other ways to learn grammar. <laughs> um, artificial intelligence. I mean, it's quite controversial. But I would recommend trying it out. By the way, I can't see the chat right now because I have the questions open. So if you're writing things in chat, I'm so sorry, I can't see any messages. Um, I will look back at them in one moment when I have finished. Um, okay, so using AI, learning grammar through context, using natural forms of the language and practicing and making mistakes. So once you learn the grammar through context or once you use AI to help you, then the third step would be to produce the language yourself and make mistakes so that you learn from those mistakes and that's how you're going to improve. Okay, Laurie, I hope that was helpful. Um, okay, we just have more questions coming in. These were not here before, so I'm going to go through these really quickly. Um, Art of Silence, how can I improve my listening and speaking skills and what books could I read? So Art of Silence, in terms of reading books, I would definitely recommend choosing books that are uh, suitable for your level or maybe a little bit higher than your level. It's always good to challenge yourself. You don't want something that's too easy. So find out your level and then find out what books using the internet you can read for that level. How to improve your listening and your speaking skills. Just you have to immerse yourself in the language art of silence. You have to listen to English on a day-to-day -day basis and I would also recommend using headphones rather than using a speaker or on your phone um, and just listen to it all the time. Whether you're cleaning, whether you're walking, running, doing exercise, cooking, listen to it as much as possible. And then when you have found something interesting to listen to, perhaps a podcast, a radio show, a TV series, then do what I had mentioned before and um, 
ask yourself questions and answer those questions out loud and record yourself. Hanjo, I came across with a hard presentation. My only fear is forget the hard vocabulary when I present it. Okay, so Hanjo, this is something that many people fear in English, in a foreign language, in their own language, you know, presentations can be awful. If you can take notes into the presentation, then maybe write down the difficult vocabulary you think that you're going to use in order. Um, I know that some presentations, you know, the, the um, whatever type of presentation you're doing, sometimes you're allowed to take little cards in. So maybe you could write down those vocabulary words in order. If not, practice and, you know, try not to worry about it too much. Um, people make mistakes in presentations all the time. It's quite a natural thing to do, but just make sure that you have practiced. Record yourself practicing. Practice in front of friends and family if you have the opportunity to. And like I said, take notes. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to stop now. Um, so let's go back and see if we have anything. If I have anything to answer. Um... I think I will miss you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. I'll be here on the 14th. Um, Carrie, are you still in Madrid? Yes, Manuel, I am still in Madrid. Absolutely. Um, hi, teacher. How can I help my students to write a composition about themselves? Okay, these are extra questions. <laughs> Uh, Nadando, I had a Q&A that was open, um, so maybe look back at some of the writing streams that I have done on Oxford Online English. There are quite a few writing workshop style streams that you could maybe look back and watch. Who is the founder of OOE, Mina? That would be Ollie. Um, yes, write a daily diary to improve your English, absolutely. Racha, you are so welcome. I hope I answered your question. Domenico is on the verge of leaving the house to hit the gym bright and early. Fantastic. I hope you and your wonderful girlfriend, Brenda, have a lovely day. Domenico, Manuel, you can run around the Gran Via next to Rialto. There is a good cafeteria. I'll invite you for a coffee and I'll pay the bill. Oh, thank you very much, Manuel. Um, thank you, Domenico. Okay. And thank you very much, Laurie and Julia and Mina and Manuel, Domenico, all of my regular viewers. And for all of you who have joined me today for the first or second or third time, thank you so much for being here. Uh, as I said, I will be back on the 14th of November. OK, I'll be back on the 14th of November with a stream on word formations. So that will be specifically uh, for B2 to C1 students to practice forming different words in English. And then on the 21st, I'll be back again talking about uh, doing a lesson on how to talk about relatives. OK, so I'm going to go now because I am really hungry and all of a sudden quite warm. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Marie and Mina. Thank you, Hanjo. Uh, I will see you all here in a couple of weeks. Bye.